in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters in Christ, today we are celebrating the feast of St. Charles Laguana and his companions. These were 21 African martyrs who died at the end of the 19th century. By their blood spilled in love for Christ, the church grew into a powerful church in Africa today. As we remember them at this Mass, we ask for the grace and pardon to the grace and the strength to confess our faith as they did. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. O God, who have made the blood of martyrs the seed of Christians, mercifully grant that the field which is your church, watered by the blood shed by St. Charles Laguana and his companions, may be fertile and always yield you an abundant harvest. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the beginning of the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, for the promise of life in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dear child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience as my ancestors did, as I remember you constantly in my prayers, night and day. For this reason, I remind you to stir into flame the gift of God that you have through the imposition of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather of power and love and self-control. So do not be ashamed of your testimony to our Lord, nor of me, a prisoner for his sake, but bear your share of hardship for the gospel with the strength that comes from God. He saved us and called us to a holy life, not according to our works, but according to his own design and the grace bestowed on us in Christ Jesus before time began, but now made manifest through the appearance of our Savior Christ Jesus, who destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, for which I was appointed preacher and apostle and teacher. On this account, I am suffering these things, but I am not ashamed, for I know him in whom I have believed and am confident that he is able to guard what has been entrusted to me until that day. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm. To you, O Lord, I lift up my eyes. To you, I lift up my eyes, who are enthroned in heaven. Behold, as the eyes of servants are on the hands of their masters. To you, O Lord, I lift up my eyes. As the eyes of a maid are on the hands of her mistress, so are our eyes on the Lord, our God, till he have pity on us. To you, O Lord, I lift up my eyes. 
Alleluia, Alleluia. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me will never die. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Some Sadducees who say there is no resurrection came to Jesus and put this question to him, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us, If someone's brother dies, leaving a wife but no child, his brother must take the wife and raise up descendants for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first married a woman and died, leaving no descendants. So the second brother married her and died, leaving no descendants, and the third likewise, and the seventh left no descendants. Last of all, the woman also died. At the resurrection, when they arise, whose wife will she be? For all seven had been married to her. Jesus said to them, Are you not misled because you do not know the scriptures or the power of God? When they rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but they are like the angels in heaven. As for the dead being raised, have you not read in the book of Moses, in the passage about the bush, how God told him, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not God of the dead, but of the living. You are greatly misled. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear Lord, bless my words. The Bible verse we just heard was one of a continued contest between the Jewish officials and Christ as they presented a very complicated question to the Lord about who would marry whom and who descendants would be whose when the end times came, when they went to heaven. Christ looked at them and said to them, you have no idea about what is in store for you in heaven, for God is the God of the living, which means that all of us, once we get to heaven's gate, remain alive. And there is no need for marriage or descendants because we are all one, the children of God. Tomorrow's scriptural passage we'll talk about as the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes begin the process of understanding who God is. In fact, what we will hear is that one of the officials asks Christ, what is the greatest commandment? And Christ's response is to say, well, what do you believe? And the Sadducee says, to love your, our God with all of our heart and our spirit and our neighbor as ourself. And Christ says to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. Not far. Why not far? For me, knowing the commandment to love fully and living that commandment is what closes the distance between us and the kingdom of God, closing the gap between talking and doing, between forming a committee to discuss it and forming a community to do it. No excuses, no justifications, just love God as demonstrated by our love of neighbor through the precious gift of Christ's love that dwells within. When we approach heaven's gate, our thought will not be about our descendants. Our thoughts will be that we are with the Father and that all of us are children of God. Recognizing that God always works for goodness beyond our imagination we bring our needs to him. For the church, may God empower us in contributing to the transformation of the whole world. Let us pray to the Lord. For governments around the world, may God guide their leaders to the truth, especially 
the truth of dignity of every human person. Let us pray to the Lord. For those suffering from any serious health or life circumstance, may the love of Christ console them in faith and trust. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those gathered, may God open our minds and hearts to the work he is asking of us and grant us the grace to respond in faith. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those who have died in the hope of resurrection, may they rest in peace of God's love. Let us pray to the Lord. God of infinite goodness, hear our prayers today. We ask through Christ our Lord. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we take a moment now to join in spiritual communion with Christ and with each other. Let us pray. We have received this divine sacrament, O Lord, as we celebrate the victory of your holy martyrs. May what help them to endure torment, we pray, make us in the face of trials, steadfast in faith and in charity through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. <laughs>